everyone hates Tesla. The factory is amazing. It's big. It's large. It's the best factory ever in all existence. And this is the intellectual property. This is the geniusness that Elon brings to every business. And so this is a copy paste type of mindset and the leadership that is in Tesla. Also, this is Elon SpaceX Star Factory. Let's get it has just built a gigantic Starship rocket factory at the SpaceX testing facility of Starbase, Texas. This is Starship's equivalent of a Tesla Gigafactory, a first-of-its-kind operation that will mass-produce rockets with a speed and efficiency that is far beyond anything the aerospace industry has seen before. The first time, first ever, more speed, more efficiency. The whole aerospace industry has not done it, never seen it done before. That's Boeing, General Dynamics. All these people that you think are just a juggernaut are really not because Tesla's in the building, Elon's in the building, SpaceX is in the building. The first thing that we need to establish is our location for the Star Factory. This is positioned just up the road from the Starbase launch pad, which you've likely seen featured in any of the past four orbital flight tests. The current Star Factory site was previously occupied by three long tents. This is where the team manufactured Starship V-1, that's the rocket that we all know today, and while the tent system allowed SpaceX to get up and running very rapidly with Starship operations, it was far from an ideal solution. Elon has said that in the first phase of Starship manufacturing, everything was always covered in mud and dust, and there were birds everywhere. But the tents allowed for a level of flexibility that SpaceX required in those early days. Since there has never been anything like Starship built before, no one really knew what the finished product was going to look like, so the non-permanent nature of the tents allowed for rapid changes in the design and manufacturing process. So if you try something and it doesn't work, then you just scrap it and try something else. This is how we ended up with Starship rockets that in some cases were very different from build to build, and we generally saw that reflected in how successful or unsuccessful the vehicles were in action. That process of trial and error has finally come together into a new Starship design that Elon and SpaceX feel confident can accomplish some pretty ambitious goals. Now, let me stop it right there. As you can see, this is a habit that Elon has doing in his companies. Tesla was the same way. I mean, the Gigafactory is one of the first factories that you see manufactured in this type of way. And it's actually the first time that a car maker actually produces the factory. Uh, most of it is subcontracted out to another contract and construction company that builds the actual car factory. But in Tesla's case, we do it ourselves. And that's not only for SpaceX also, SpaceX is doing the same thing. And the mega factory, which is different from Giga. Giga factories for the cars, mega factories is for our energy, our batteries, right? And so we produce mega packs and power walls and et cetera. So that's a first of its kind. Energy storage, the mega packs, they are first of its kind, one of the first factories in North America like that. So we're one of the first in a lot of things. And it comes from Star Factory to Giga Factory to the Mega Factory. So this is a habit. In different type of industries, you see that Elon still applies the same type of first principle and same type of mindset in innovation and creativity, especially on the side of manufacturing and production a fully rapidly reusable orbital vehicle that can transport people and cargo to the moon and Mars. Elon has said that the tent system becomes very inefficient once you know what you want to build, and that's where Starship V2 comes into play. This is the vehicle currently being manufactured inside the Star Factory. It's an evolution of the Starship that was born from years of trial and error and plenty of explosions along the way. The design of Starship V2, or sometimes called Block 2, is not radically different to the eye. It's going to be a little bit taller by about two meters or six feet, the biggest change really comes around the nose cone and the design of the aero flaps. Now, if we remember back to Starship Playtest number four, we got an up close view of that nose flap as it disintegrated throughout the re-entry process. That's not supposed to happen, by the way. And SpaceX definitely knew that their flap design wasn't ideal to begin with. Prior to that flight, Elon expressed some doubt that the hinge mechanism would be sturdy enough. He also wrote this post back in 2021 that said forward flaps will change a lot in the upcoming versions but the team needed some real-world flight data to help steer them in the right direction. This is what they've come up with. The V2 nose flaps are more diamond-shaped with a distinct point at the trailing edge. That's going to help push the shockwaves from the atmosphere away from the ship's body and prevent too much pressure from building up under the wing. The V2 flaps are also mounted higher up on the nose. This will increase the amount of leverage that they can exert on the ship, and they are further back to the leeward side of the hull. 
This, again, will help reduce the amount of hot plasma that builds up underneath them on re-entry. In addition, we can see that the new flaps are about half the thickness of the originals, with a much lower... So, again, constant innovation for specific things on the vehicle. And we're going to move a little bit forward so we can learn more about the factory. And linear adjacent flow. Seems to be a terminology that Elon made up himself, because every result when you Google it is just people wondering what Elon meant when he said it and no one being able to give a straight answer. Even when asked about it on X a couple months ago, Elon only replied simple but essential principles. From what I've gathered, Star Factory production is kind of opposite to the standard moving assembly line that was championed by Henry Ford a hundred years ago, where a product moves down a conveyor belt and gradually has more and more stuff attached to it until it becomes a finished product. Elon knows from building Tesla vehicles that there is a lot of room for improvement over the old system. So, yeah, he's about to show because this same system was built out for the new actual Gigafactory and how we're going to get the Model 2 up and running, how we're going to reduce costs and make the build out more effective and efficient. Linear adjacent flow is probably something very similar or even exactly the same as Tesla's unboxed manufacturing process, which is all about building out separate segments of the car in parallel manufacturing, then bringing them all together at the very end. So instead of building the body of a car from front to back on one line, then adding doors, then sending it off to the paint shop, then putting it back on the line, then taking the doors off, then installing the seats, then putting the doors back on. You get my point. Unboxed means building the front of the car and the back of the car on two separate lines that run in parallel or adjacent to each other. So each half gets built, painted, seats, and interior installed all in one continuous process. On a third adjacent line, you build the sides of the car and the doors. Then at final assembly, you bring the front and the back together, you attach the sides and the doors, add the glass, add the wheels, and voila, you've got a finished car. When e now, see, that's just genius right there. That's the secret sauce. That's the things that we are challenging. Remember, the last time that this process was developed or changed was Henry Ford. So it's 2024. There could be new methods and new strategies, but most companies are not challenging that. They're not looking to recreate or what do they call it? Reinvent the wheel. So we look to reinvent the wheel, not to make it more complex, to make it more simple, more effective, and more efficient. Elon talks about the production line in Star Factory. He says there are stations that things move through. Each station has specialized labor for each individual task, and the tempo at which the products move from one station to the next is the key to the whole process. That means no downtime, no waiting for the next thing to arrive continuous motion on the production line, the line itself does not move. Elon says that it doesn't matter if there's a conveyor belt. Now, here's how this plays out inside the Star Factory. The production process begins at the end of the building that's farthest from the road. This is where giant rolls of stainless steel are cut and welded into rings. These make up the body segment of the ship. The nose cone is a little more difficult. To make the pointy segment, the stainless steel needs to be pressed into shapes with a hydroforming machine. They do the same to make the round domes that form the tops and bottoms of the ship's fuel tanks. So as you can see, there's a whole entire process that he's going to go through. But let's go down to the mega bay because I think that's very interesting as far as the process. Starbase has two mega bays, and this is where the final rocket stacking takes place. The Raptor engines are installed and all of the finishing touches that go into making the vehicle ready for action. We know that Elon Musk has some pretty ambitious goals for Starship production. This Star Factory might be the first, but it certainly won't be the last. Elon says that in the long term, he could see SpaceX building 1,000 starships per year. That would be well into the Mars City building phase, but in the short term, he thinks that the existing Star Factory can build around 100 rockets per year, or one every three days. SpaceX is also already laying the foundation for Star Factory 2 at their property on Cape Canaveral, near the launch pad that's also being constructed for Starship down there. That would, at the very least, double the rocket building to one every day and a half, and then with some added efficiency thrown in, all of a sudden, SpaceX could be building one rocket per day. The company is currently producing just under 200 Falcon 9 upper stage platforms per year, which will climb over 200 next year. That's a much more simple construction project than a Starship. The Falcon upper stage is basically just one engine and a payload adapter. But as long as the size of the manufacturing process can scale to the size of the rocket being built, then it's definitely far from the craziest thing Elon has ever said. Far from the craziest thing Elon not only has said, but has done. And once again, how does this affect Tesla? Well, this is the person that could bring those same type of skill sets. And he has, I gave you the examples of Gigafactory, Omega Factory to Tesla. So again, this type of simple essential principle is necessary. And this is something that makes the company cutting edge. This is something that allows us to stand out from the pack 
this is something that you need to observe as an investor or just maybe somebody who likes to just know this information. Maybe this could even be applied to the way you run things in your life. But I think that it's time for us to channel or challenge the actual old assembly line and figure out new ways to make it more effective and efficient. And as crazy as it seems, guys, I'm here to let you know that a lot of companies and a lot of organizations, they just don't challenge the SOP, standard operational procedures. They do business as they have always done business, and they continue to do it the same way without change. Tesla looks for a revolution. We look to make a change. We look to delete steps to make the thing more effective and efficient. And that's why Tesla has the best margins. And that's why SpaceX has the best margins and COGS, cost of goods and services. They have a better pricing. They make the rockets for cheaper and they save taxpayers money. Again, this is what we need to make American companies great again. I see you guys at the next episode. It's electric. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It's electric.